Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video on the Turfcast channel and it's been a while. Uh, it's my first time back on here since the TST event over in America at Burnley Football Club which I played in so f firstly thank you for all the support on that, it meant the world to me and I've kind of since then just completely, or since the end of the year to be fair, just had a step back really from football and well from Burnley as the Euros has been going on and all my attention and kind of um, emotional battery has got all gone towards that and obviously in recent days there's been a lot of news and the biggest one of all is of course about Scott Parker and I kind of want to give my thoughts on it I've been asked by Joe to send in a video about where do I stand with it because I didn't want to give like an initial reaction because I wasn't even here. I was over in England um, for a wedding, so I wasn't even here at that time period. But I've seen the response online, and I've seen the response by not only Burnley fans, which is the main group here, but has been kind of raided by Fulham fans and Bournemouth fans, giving their two cents on it, as they were obviously their prior clubs, and even Club Bruges fans too over in Belgium. And it's hard to not almost be sucked into that world of negativity where you're getting uh, a lot of fans from both sets of clubs not having particularly the most positive uh, mem memory of Scott Parker. However, I do want to caveat this with the first most important thing. Scott Parker got both those two teams promoted from the championship. And that obviously is the, um, the key aspect that got Alan Pace and the board and the recruitment team to get Scott Parker on board. And of course, there were many other options that we were looking at. There was, I think, 10 at first on the initial list. And then it worked its way down to the likes of a, a Rude Van Nistelrooy, the likes of a Carlos Corbran. And Craig Bellamy was, of course, a big part of that. Frank Lampard was initially, but not eventually in the end. And it kind of led to Rude Van Nistelrooy, Craig Bellamy, or Scott Parker. And... I think for many fans, I think we will all be in the same boat, and this is my, my own honest thoughts, that you can't help but feel a little bit underwhelmed because you'd like to think because of how well we did under Vincent Company and the um, complete, this in incredible acceleration of his reputation and status in the footballing world, that that would be something that a lot of managers would also pay attention to. And most importantly... Most importantly for a manager is, actually two most important things actually came to mind. Not only was he backed to the hills financially, in almost every way, almost every single play that he wanted, it appeared like he got. Every single play that he wanted, he got. There was nothing in the way of the plays that he wanted as far as we're concerned. There would be one or two that was like we would have wanted, but we would have wanted like 30, 40 million. Uh, or they would have wanted 30, 40 million. Like, uh, like to Ian Martin being the, the primate sample. But most importantly, the fans, the fans back to Vincent Company all the way. And it, maybe not every single one, but the vast majority did. However, that was with the pretense of, okay, but... He's the best person to get us back up again because he's already done it and in incredible fashion. So that is what got me thinking, surely we're a very fascinating and attractive club for a lot of managers. We have not just power payments, but um, a great reputation of getting back up to Premier League. We've done it three times in a row now that each time we go down, we get promoted. That's that's a very reoccurring thing here. Oh, the last three times we've been in Championship, we've got promoted, right? So, I just, I don't know. I always felt like a Carlos Corbran, a Cooper I thought was possible, but maybe not in the end. A Rude Van Nistel, I just kind of felt like it'd be that kind of, centre manager that you feel like can adapt to the Premier League. Uh, maybe not too much with Van Nistelrooy, but you feel like Carlos Corbran and Cooper can adapt to Premier League. And it feels like this is the next level maybe below that, where these are managers where they've had some decent success in the Championship. However, in the Premier League, they're still a bit, a bit of an unknown entity. And that's kind of where we stand here. So that's kind of my all-around thoughts about Parker all in all. In conclusion, in conclusion, I think Scott Parker is, albeit underwhelming, is more than good enough for the championship and for what we need right now. I think that it's a pair of hands that is somewhat safe. Of course, you're not guaranteed the world. There's no guarantee that we will go up this year. You can't guarantee anything because that would be foolish. However, of all the options available, he's got 
a good track record of getting promoted from championship. He's done it two out of two times, right? And people may say that, oh, but this team was this good and he shouldn't have done this. The facts are the facts. He's got promoted two out of two times, right? With two different clubs. And that's, of course, why we got him in. My main, my main concern is two things. Number one is if we do go up, and this is going into a year in the future, I will have some reservations over how can he adapt the club to the Premier League. He's had two goals in it now and both times failed. Well, first time failed disastrously over the entire season with Fulham. Any other time with Bournemouth, he was only given four games. So maybe he would have got it fine in the end. I don't think I can really judge that Bournemouth ending too much of a success or of a failure because he only had four games and the three games that he did lose was all against like top six teams and he won the only game that wasn't which I think was like Aston Villa or home right so I can't really judge the Bournemouth thing but this is my only concern alongside with that is the way that he's left Bournemouth he, he did appear to do some sort of damage control and was out for himself which is okay you can you can understand under managers but I feel like from what I've gathered from the interviews and everything that Scott Parker has said since he's come in, it's all very uh, self-driven. Everything has kind of come about him and him and his way and his values and the way he wants to do things and how he needs support and how he needs this. It's all coming from a very self-portraying angle, which that's just the way that he comes across. Some people like it, some people dislike it, but I feel like if results don't go our way, that could very easily be twisted very easily if results don't go our way. And I feel like he's also been portraying or projecting also the fact that in his main first interview was about how that he needs support um, all the way to the end from the fans. He needs support so much and that no matter what happens for the rough times that he needs support. And of course, you would want that, you'd expect that, but I feel like he's been also burned in the past under his other, manage, uh, his other stint at not only... Bournemouth, but of course, Club Brugge. At Fulham, he was there for the entire season when she went down. So he was there for the entire campaign. So he wasn't sacked halfway through. And that campaign was also really poor, by the way, with quite, to be fair, a decent Fulham team. So, yeah, I, I could see how it can get toxic fast if things don't go our way. And that's just kind of my own kind of warning, thinking I can see how that can go. However... I do think the negativity is a bit over the top. I've seen Burnley fans, fans, I'm going to say in quotation marks here, say that they're going to want to have us lose every single game because they are so against the appointment of Scott Parker just because they want to prove that they are right because they don't want him and he thinks they're not good. He, think, he, he doesn't want Scott Parker. He thinks he's a bad manager. Therefore, he would rather be proven right than to see Burnley Football Club succeed. And that's just one example that I've seen. There's been others as well that's really going over the top. It's calling it a disgrace, an embarrassment. Let's be honest here. What are you on about? You know, like, underwhelming? Sure, okay. Maybe we would have wanted someone which has got some Premier League experience or whatever else, man. If it was just a, a random European manager from Scandinavia, we would all be excited, right? But because it's kind of an Englishman again and because he's had some relatively decent performance in the championship, but he's not, like, incredibly... He's not Vincent Company, right? We've been quite lucky with our managers in the recent decade, was two. Sean Dyche and... Well, of course, Vincent Company, And they've done incredible things for the club. You may say Vincent Company not so much, but I think, again, people forget the position that we was in when he joined. There was no reason for us to respond and bounce back and win that league in the manner that we did. We had eight, eight outfield players at the football club. The core fundamental building blocks of Burnley Football Club was gone, right? Ben Mee, Tarkovsky... Chris Wood went in January, to be fair. Like, so many players went. Nick Pope. That were part of every single thing that was good for us. Dwight McNeil as well. Don't forget him. So, with like eight, eight outfield players, we brought in a bunch of new talents and they, were, they pretty much all set, set the club alight. You know, they were all good transfers. Other than maybe, you may look at, I don't know, like Bastion, maybe, or, or Cherlinov, but like, uh, or Divis Ugly. But hey, it's good to win them against Rotherham at least, you know. I just think that we need to get behind him. We need to get behind Scott Parker. Give him a chance. If you got if you got your reservations, that's fine. Of course, have your own opinions. 
But for the first two, three months here, back the manager. That's all we can do as as fans, really. And we're going to take it game by game, week by week, and month by month and see where we're at. Because I don't think he's all around a bad appointment. I think he's a decent appointment. I think he'll do decent. He'll do good for the championship. And then we're going to see what happens next year. And I hope that he's learned from his lessons in the past. He's adapted what he wants to do. And we will reap the rewards of it. So that's the way I see it. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Comment down below your thoughts down below. And I'll see you guys another time on the Turf Cash channel. I'm sure we'll be going live again soon. So enjoy your day, boys. And girls, see ya. Up the cloud.